This is the first of a pair of videos looking at the EMIS Web consultation section in Care Records. This video gives an overview of the consultation section, including looking at past consultations. Creation of new consultations is covered in the second video. We'd recommend that you first view the video called Navigating the EMIS Web Care Records and Summary, as this covers some of the common ribbon options that appear in all of the care record sections. The consultation section can be accessed in a variety of ways depending on how you have configured your shortcuts. You can select the consultation shortcut from either the quick launch menu on the home page or the quick access toolbar across the top of the EMIS screen. You can also go to the EMIS ball, care record and select consultations. If you are already in the care record, consultations is one of the tabs across the top of the ribbon. The consultation section displays all consultations in chronological order with the most recent at the top. Scroll through these consultations using the scroll bar on the right or with a scroll button on your mouse. Each consultation has a header which displays the date and time, location and healthcare professional who held the consultation. Notice that some consultation entries are administrative and do not relate to a direct contact with a patient. An example of this would be when EMIS creates a consultation entry automatically when a document is created on a patient's record. To the left of the page there is a date navigator panel which can be used to target specific dates more easily and go directly to the consultations for that date. For example, let's pick 2017 September the 5th. There's also a problems navigator which is collapsed by default. This enables you to select a problem which will filter the consultation history list down to only display consultations relating to that problem. You'll notice the indicator alongside each problem which shows you how many consultations there are for that problem. Let's pick acute conjunctivitis. Once you've applied one of these problem filters, a red bar will appear across the top reminding you that you're looking at a filtered view. To remove the filter, click on the red cross at the right end of the bar. Notice that if you move your cursor over the separator bar between the left and right panels, you can drag and drop the separator to adjust the amount of screen width being used by each section. Other filters are available from the ribbon if your system has been configured accordingly. For example, you can create filters on user type, like these two, GPs only and nurses only. These configuration options are explained in detail in a separate video about configuration. The My Consultations option filters out all consultations that don't have you recorded as the consulter. The Search View option enables you to perform free text searches. Type in what you want to find and the consultation history list will filter as you type. Remember that this search only searches the content of the consultations, although it will include document names. It doesn't include clinicians names. This would be done using a filter. To come out of search view, either click on the search view icon in the ribbon again or click on the red cross on the right hand end of the search view section. Where a consultation has been edited, you'll notice an edited icon. If you double click on this icon, you'll be able to view the audit trail for the consultation. It's also possible to view the audit trail for any selected consultation by right clicking on the consultation header and selecting audit trail. Whilst we're looking at the right-click options, you'll notice that it's also possible to edit or delete the selected consultation here. Furthermore, when right-clicking, you can change, apply or remove a confidentiality policy to that consultation as long as your user permissions allow this. There are more details on confidentiality policies in a separate video. There is an online visibility option which lets you configure whether or not this consultation will be displayed for the patient to view on their own online care record. 
Notice that this can only be controlled at consultation level and you cannot select an individual element of a consultation to control in this way. The Knowledge option, as with the search button in the ribbon, takes you into Mentor Online, directly to the pages that are relevant for the code that you have highlighted. Let's find a value code. With value codes highlighted, there's a tabular and graphical trend link which each take you to the appropriate display of all records for the selected code. For example, a tabular or graphical display of tympanic temperature here. As you can see, once you're in either the tabular or graphical display, you can toggle between the two views. You can also change the date range and you can print the graph or table. An alternative way of viewing the graphical and tabular views is available on the ribbon when you've selected the coded entry that you're interested in. If no appropriate code is selected, this ribbon option will remain greyed out. Another icon to look out for in the list of past consultations is this one. If a consultation has been added via EMIS Remote Consultations, for example, by another service that has permissions to access your EMIS system and add consultations, then this icon will appear alongside that consultation in the history list. The consultation type for a consultation that's been added using remote consultations will be Enterprise Consultation. Finally, there are a few other options that may be useful. The View Deleted icon in the ribbon will display any deleted consultations and enable you to browse through these, viewing the content and the reason for deletion. To the left of the screen, you'll see a Shared Data View panel. If there are sharing agreements in place, this displays all the organisations with which your practice has sharing agreements and you can select any active ones to pull in the data from that organisation to be able to view it as part of your care record view. Sharing organisations might include, for example, a local extended access hub, a breathlessness service or a regional shared care record. Data that's pulled in in this way is displayed as though it is embedded in your practice record, merged in chronological order with your local practice data. However, this record is created on the fly and none of the data from the other organisations is actually being stored on your local practice system. Here's an example from a shared record. The red and blue icons shown here identify which items of data are being shared from other organisations. That's completed this overview of the consultation section. See what you can remember by trying these questions. We'd now recommend that you look at part two, the video that covers creating new consultations.